Oh, yeah. Looks like we have another one of these magical little tools from Great Eastern Cutlery. What do we have here, fellas? Bullnose Work Knife, 01 Tool Steel. Hmm. It's a number 71. It says Black Delrin. Stick with me, guys. We'll open up the tube and see what's inside. Hi gang, Rob here. It is the evening of 31 March 2014. Coming to you with another little journey back in time to the present. Yeah, we have a brand new <clears throat> Great Eastern Cutlery Farm and Field Series, not GEC, not Tidiute, not Northfield, <clears throat> but their Farm and Field Series. And you may find this in the catalog or on websites either called a sodbuster or a bullnose. Kind of depend on when it's been made. This one is marketed as the bullnose. And we'll, I, I need to get me one of those uh, uh, tube poppers from Mike Latham at, uh, what is it, Northwest? <coughs> I'm sorry, no, it's cut. Uh, CollectorKnives.net. I love this. In the cardboard tube with the wax paper. Here it is. Mm, mm, mm. This particular knife is property of my buddy Campfire Talk. He ordered this last week, had it shipped to me. Uh, he likes uh, he likes me to look at his knives before he gets them and and uh, let me marvel at them and you know try not to envy him and all that good stuff. Uh, but he's sort of been in love with the sodbuster pattern Camp has for a long time. And uh, he was thinking about buying a case sodbuster. And we were both sort of we were on the phone one day and we were both on uh, on collectorknives.net looking through to see what a good little utility slash hunting knife he could get from the GEC line. This is his first Great Eastern Cutlery knife. And we both sort of stumbled on this pattern at the same time. And man, is it cool. <clears throat> Look at this thing. Got uh, a brass pivot pin for the back spring. Got a brass lanyard tube. A gorgeous stainless steel rivet with the uh, Farm and Field logo stamped into it. No bolsters on this knife. It's sort of a light duty utility knife. And oh gosh, like bre uh, stainless steel liners and back spring. And now, guys, check it out. Oh, of course, it is a slip joint with a half stop. I gotta wipe this blade. Mm. Just like uh, Just like it says on the tube. This is 01 tool steel, flat ground, and you can see why they call it a bull nose, can't you? It's a drop point with just an ever so slight drop in the spine and this big sweeping belly. Kind of reminds you of a Rat 1 a little bit, doesn't it? Full flat ground, very thin behind the edge. And of course, uh, when I get a knife in for campfire talk, I... Got to put my edge on it for them. And like most of my traditionals, I sharpened this one just one single bevel, 18 degrees to the edge. And then uh, as I'm finishing, I just, when I'm on my 2000 grit a polishing tape phase, when I come right to the end, I just pick it up about a quarter degree just to deburr the edge, polish it off, and then strap it as usual. Look at that beautiful satin finish. Great utility finish with that laser etched bull nose logo. What an awesome handle. This is Black Delrin, guys, in case I didn't mention that before. Not super glossy, kind of a satin finish. Let's see if you can see down in there. Look how cleanly they finish these knives on the inside. Just amazing. 
<clears throat> all the transitions are just beautiful. Feel a little bit here at the butt. Transition from Delrin to steel, but not bad. These knives, guys, run about 50 bucks uh, for a super high carbon tool steel blade, and uh, this 01 will rust. It'll rust quickly if it's exposed, if it's uh, naked without any preserving oil of any kind on it. Any kind of moisture or acid will start the patina process. I know Campfire Talk is going to frog lube this thing when he gets it. It's sort of going to go home with a little Hoppy's gun oil on it for him. He'll do his thing with it, but let's check out these ergonomics. I mean, oh gosh. Just beautiful in hand. A full four finger grip. What you got here is about a three and three quarter inch handle. The blade about three and a sixteenth inches. How's that for economical? Boy, it sure makes the most out of its size, doesn't it? Under four inches closed. Thing weighs, I didn't weigh it. Uh, sub two ounces, guaranteed. And look at all that cutting edge, man. Almost three inches of cutting edge. Of course, as you guys know, if you followed the Great Eastern Cutlery line, the edge they come with is not superb. In fact, it's not really very good at all. However, uh, Peter's Heat Treat in Pennsylvania specializes in cutlery heat treating, especially the, you know, the, the higher tech steels and the tool steels. They put on a phenomenal heat treat, super tough, nice and hard. It holds an edge well, easy enough to sharpen. And look at the polish that that 01 takes. <clears throat> it is a half stop knife. Now if you if you guys buy one of the 01 steel knives that are GEC, you're going to notice that be, they're packed in like a very waxy, almost a cosmoline preservative, and the action is going to be pretty stiff. In fact, the walk and talk is not really very good right out of the tube. Uh, you have to get some good light oil in that pivot. Get it moving, get, get it limbered up a little bit, and then it's just awesome. Absolutely no blade play in this knife. That, that big rivet pivot, super strong. I wouldn't say it's as strong as a Barlow with that big, huge, double riveted bolster, but what a great little utility blade. Here's another neat thing about these Delrin Farm and Field Series knives, sodbusters in general. Because you don't have a, you know, a delicate cover material, you don't have shiny nickel silver bolsters that you're worried about scuffing up, you don't need to use a pocket slip for one of these. You just throw it in a pocket, let it, let it jingle around with your keys and your change, you know. Just have a satin black Delrin handle. If it gets a little scratched up, gets a little hazy, who cares? You know? This knife is made to work. And I have no doubt in its ability to do so. What a beauty. Let's see how it looks in other grips, or how it feels in other grips. That draw cut grip is absolute money. Of course, the saber grip is great. The hammer grip is great. You're never gonna you're never gonna reverse the grip this knife for a, a tactical situation. But if you did, it'd be really comfortable. The, uh, the pull on this knife, it's not bad. Uh, it's not bad, you know, it's not heavy like the American Jack that I had, that, that I have that I did a video on a few weeks ago. It's, it's not going to rip your fingernail off. Let's see if you can close it with the index finger. I haven't tried that. Might be just a little stiff for that. Get, get my fingers out of the way here. I've been cutting myself a lot lately on video okay well <clears throat> let's see before we send it home how sharp it got 
I think pretty sharp. Let's just take a peek. There's no thumb stud. I just felt for a thumb stud. That didn't work out too well. Guys, I'm, I'm still stuck in the tactical world sometimes, even with a traditional in my hand. All right, let's see. Ooh, silent and deadly. Ooh. That's a pretty sharp knife, my friend. You know, with all these super steels we have nowadays, it's easy to forget. A uh, good old high carbon oil hardening tool steel can be. Does it take some maintenance? Yeah. Are you rewarded for it? You betcha. Well, Campfire Talk, my friend, this will be in the mail to you tomorrow, Tuesday. Yeah, April Fool's Day. <laughs> I'm not going to send you an empty box. Don't worry. Guys, that's all for tonight. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And remember, the word is sharp.